Hey guys, here with Tom from American Air Arms. Uh, we went hunting today with these uh, two Slayer 357s, um, new line of air rifles that uh, are going to be available in June of 2015. Uh, he's kind enough to uh, loan me one, and I gotta say, this thing is amazing. It definitely puts a smile on my face every time I shoot it. Um, what made you uh, decide to build something like this, Tom? Well, I've always liked uh, air rifles, and I got into them recently about four years ago, kind of reintroduced myself. I was doing a lot of uh, uh, powder burner shooting, a lot of metallic silhouette and that kind of thing. And uh, I got into, started with a Springer, and uh, really enjoyed that. I kind of liked the, uh, you know, just the motion of it and the ease, and just kind of enjoyed going out and plinking with the Springer. But, you know, with a powder burner background, you want to go hunting, and you want to have more power, and you want to have a little, a little longer reach. You would mentioned that you would built this kind of for coyotes. Yeah, well, being in California, and we're kind of right. limited to, to the predators with the right. air guns and the small game, so... Yeah, coyotes in mind when I designed this in 357 for sure. So it's it's like a 200 yard gun. I mean, I know I feel comfortable at least 100 with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, if you have good position on your on your quarry, you know, and you can uh, you can line up your shot. 200 yards is possible. Yeah. I mean, it in seems, California, a lot of times it seems it's a like little <laughs> much for jackrabbits, but it's a hell of a lot of fun. I will say that it. Like I said, it puts a smile on my face every time I shoot it. Um, this gets six shots, and it's filled to 3,500? 3,500 PSI, six shots, and that runs it down to uh, about 2,700 PSI. need a tank to fill this. Well, not 100% necessary, you have but... You tried to pump it. Yeah, I have pumped it with the hill pump, and I could not pump my hill pump past 3,200 PSI, right. and it took a long time to get there, right. and I'm not a lightweight guy and when it got to 3200 that's all it would go so yes uh, just about everybody has a 4500 psi to fill system now and uh, so the 3500 psi fill is kind of uh, not too difficult to achieve and what kind of barrels are on them these are barrels manufactured by tj enterprises so they're chrome molly hammer forged and you offer these uh, 22 through 45 that's the plan right now we're starting with the 357 it's uh, popular, and like I said, California coyotes are pretty attractive. Uh, next one will be a 308 in this model, and then a 45. Oh, let me ask you, smaller calibers, uh, I know you have to have regulated versions, because I know this gets six shots. Like a 25 caliber, you know, about how many shots and what kind of power do you in 25 caliber, uh, if you're going to shoot pellets, so we're not talking 257, we're talking right. 25 caliber JSBs, uh, you're looking around 60 shots and anywhere between 40 and 60 foot pounds mm -hmm. in that range. And is, is that particular model a bull pub? You can get a bull pub, a rifle. Right. Or... It's based on the same action. Uh, so most of the rifles are the same. The difference between the pellet models is it'll be regulated. Right. Right, and this is the left-handed model because I know you're you're left-handed, um, but you're going to offer it left and right. Left and right-handed, yes. And you'd mentioned that it's factory tuned, like you call it. Factory tuned. Yeah, the idea is not to let the uh, the, the person who buys it have to do too much R and D. You know, a lot of the R and D in air guns is left up to the shooter. Right. So the idea is to ship the gun with a decent tune with a pellet they're likely to shoot for the application. And what kind of pellets do you recommend for this? For the 308 and the 357? Yeah. Well, right now we're shooting a, uh, a swedge slug that's made by John Kripe, and it's 139 grain. Uh, John and I worked on that for about two or three months of adjusting the size, the nose, the base, until we dialed in on something we thought worked really well for this rifle. So this is about... 278 foot pounds. 275 foot pounds, uh, more or less. It, it's it it uh, starts off it's, around 270. And it's pretty quiet. I mean, I was surprised. You know, I was expecting because I've shot other big wars. I was kind of expecting, you know, that surprising, you know, 
you might need hearing protection, so it's actually pretty quiet. Um, matter of fact, when you guys were shooting it earlier, it really didn't sound much more than my Marauder. I know I was a ways away, um, but I was pleasantly surprised. And you had mentioned something about how this is mounted. The, scope, scope. Yeah, the barrel on this gun has got a, uh, it's fully floated, so it attaches here at the receiver. And then the scope mount is cantilevered, so it's not attached to the barrel at all. Because I know a lot of guys complain about they can't, you know, you can't mess with it. Right. So this is, um, yeah, I've shown this before. This is pretty, pretty durable. You know, you can carry the gun by this. It's not going to go anywhere. And it's pretty light. I mean, what, what do you think it weighs? It's 6.6 uh, .6 pounds without the scope. So add a full-size scope on there, that's another pound and a half. Yeah, so it's pretty reasonable. Yeah, just around eight pounds with a, with a normal scope. And it's comfortable, it's lightweight, and this is adjustable. Buttstock is adjustable. It's got uh, five positions. So it's got like a maybe two or three inches. About two and a half inches of adjustment. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, let me ask you, can you tune it down if you, if you want it to? Well, tune it down a little bit. I mean, if you wanted to go to 125 grain bullet yeah. instead of the 139, you could tune it for that. Because six shots, I mean, for predator hunting, I mean, that's all you need. That's all you need, yeah. Um, <coughs> but I think for pigs, um, obviously jackrabbits and coyotes, I like that caliber, personally. I, I couldn't see myself going bigger. I mean, I think I would like for jackrabbits, like a 30 caliber, maybe you're regulated. Exactly, yeah, the 30 caliber is perfect for jackrabbits. Yeah. It gives you the little extra reach you need, and uh, it's just a great, I mean, even though you only have JSB and JSB to choose from, both those pellets are just fantastic. And it's got rails. I noticed you attached on this one, you've got the, it's kind of like a magpole grip. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. That's the magpole grip that you see on ARs. Uh, Especially for people with long arms, they all they'll like to have that foregrip on there where they can get a little little further up towards the uh, towards the muzzle where they uh, use the foregrip. Shorter people with shorter reach like me, I mean, I pretty much like it all the way back. So yeah, I shoot you know I got a AR-15, and to me, I just love the feel of it. You know, I love I love how it feels to me. I like the trigger. And to me, this feels almost exactly like it. You, you know, you'll get a lot of uh, anti-bullpup sediment. And uh, I gotta say, most people who don't like the bullpup probably haven't shot one. Right. And to me, the biggest advantage of the bullpup is it's a platform that's got room to grow. So what about the rifle? Is the rifle, ha the rifle has a longer barrel or is it about the same? It's gonna be the same. And obviously it's just longer. It's longer, right, because it's conventional. Uh, it probably will have a longer barrel in 308. Um, we were looking at this is 24 inch barrel, so the 308 will probably be a 28 inch barrel. And what kind of stocks are we going to go with? Well, think? we got walnut and laminated coming. Uh, the walnut will be, you know, kind of a Claro walnut, just your standard walnut stock that you get. Um, if you want a custom stock that's fancy, you know, that can always be done by a custom stock maker. And then the laminate. Uh, you know, all the laminates people like the camera. Because, I mean, it's, it looks all weather. I mean, I know this is, what, titanium? Titanium, yes. So it's not going to rust. And, you know, the coating you have in, on here looks looks great. And you said that you were going to offer some uh, some camo as well. Yes, we're going to offer custom painted camouflage. So pretty much anything that somebody wants. Anything that somebody wants, yeah. Or these... we might start with just a few patterns, but... It, it could go to fully custom. And so, like, something like this, a camo version, like, roughly, what would that... Well, the base set? gun is $1,900. Uh-huh. And the camo is probably going to add about three or $400 to the price. So. so that's very competitive with, you know, FX. That's competitive with a lot of the crickets. I mean, it's competitive with... Yeah, yeah. It's competitive, you know, we are in between Korean guns where you're wishing for a little more power and a little more refinement. But it's and, not. It's, and it's European American guns. made. Yeah, and the European guns where you pay, you know, they're expensive, you get quality, and, and this is exactly right. This right. is completely American made, and, you know, everything is top-notch quality. So, um, 
any kind of repairs somebody needed, um, what, what would what could possibly go wrong? I mean, are they pretty well, reliable? They, yeah, I mean, they are air rifles, and they are more complex than a firearm. I mean, right. That's just something you can't avoid with air rifles. So being PCPs, the obvious problem is, is sometimes leaks. Yeah. Um, so, but everything uses standard O-rings. So, you know, if it, if it does spring a leak, uh, they can be replaced easily. Uh, and then the magazines. The magazines are a six-shot rotary. Uh huh. Similar to like a Marauder. Similar to a Marauder. Yeah, they're um, they're uh, self uh, self um, self indexing. Self indexing. Thank you. And they're metal, plastic. Uh, all aluminum. Oh, nice. Yeah. So yeah, this is. I gotta say, guys, <laughs> I shot it quite a bit the past uh, uh, few weeks. We went to uh, the Pacific Air Gun Show, uh, the Expo, and we set up a trap inside. And people were just having a blast. I, I watched. You know, every time somebody shot it, you know, they'd get up and they had that big smile on their face, and uh, that's what it gives me. And I just like the name, 357 Slayer. Um, American Air Arms. Um, it is a beautiful rifle, Tom. It Thank really you. is. Thank you for letting me uh, talk with Absolutely. you about it and letting me use it. Hopefully, we'll get some jackrabbits today. Thank you. Dana making currency out of pellets. Nice. It's like a quarter. What well, kind of? This is, uh, tell us about these pellets. It's 139 grain, 1E, made for Tom's 357. Wow. I want to weigh it, see how much of it's still there. Looks like it's all there. Yeah, it does look like it's all there. Thank you.